Sometimes people write me and tell me they believe in Jesus. They've been convicted that He is the Lord and Savior of the world, but they're not exactly sure what steps they need to take in order to be saved. So in this video, I'm going to explain that as I present to you 5 Steps to Salvation. But before I do that, make sure and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Step number one, admit you're a sinner. The definition of sin is breaking God's law of Ten Commandments. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now in case you're not sure that the law which is being referred to here is the Ten Commandments, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 7 verse 7, Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So the law which identifies sin includes the commandment, Thou shalt not covet, and that is actually the tenth commandment. You can read through all of the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17. To give you a few examples, the first commandment tells us not to worship other gods. Did you know that you can make a god out of anything? Because anything that takes the place of God in your life now becomes your god or idol. If you've neglected God in your life, if you've Instead of trying to improve your relationship with God on a daily basis by studying the Bible and praying, if you let other things take the place of that time that you should have been devoting to God, you have been worshipping other gods. It could be morning cartoons, I don't know, but that is breaking the first commandment. You could literally break the first commandment by worshipping gods who are not the God of the Bible as well. The God of the Bible is the one true God. The third commandment tells us not to take the name of the Lord in vain. That basically means using names or titles that belong to God in a way that is irreverent or disrespectful. God is holy and His name should be guarded from being disrespected because when people use it in such a way, it lowers their concept of His holiness. One way many people have done that and still do that is use God's name in place of a cuss word. Are you guilty of that? I know I am. I used to do that all the time. Fortunately, I don't do that anymore because the Lord gave me the victory over that after becoming a Christian. But that is a sin. Then there's the fifth commandment. It tells us to honor your father and mother. Have you ever dishonored your parents? I think kids do that from the time they are born. Trust me, I have two kids of my own and one more on the way. Sometimes they just don't listen. Well, anyway, that's a sin. Stealing and lying are also forbidden by the Ten Commandments. I've done both of those in my life. Have you? Sinner. And then there's the Seventh Commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I've never committed adultery. At least I'm good there, right? Not so fast, buddy. Because not only is there a physical application to the law, there's also a spiritual or mental application. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 through 28, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old times, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on the woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Have you ever sexually fantasized about a woman that is not your wife? Or if you're a woman, about a man that is not your husband? You might be saying, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't harm anyone. Well, the next time you fantasize about someone, especially if you're a guy who is fantasizing about some woman, go up to that person and ask them if they think there's anything wrong with you fantasizing about them. And I think you'll get a different response. Not to mention, thoughts lead to actions. That's how affairs happen. And that's why God doesn't want us thinking sinful thoughts. So, all things considered, I think it's safe to say that we all have sinned. That is, everybody who has ever lived except Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 confirms this, saying, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as a result, everybody is under the penalty of the law, which is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, 
for the wages of sin is death. So the sooner you admit you're a sinner, the better. You may be saying to yourself, wait, I don't want to die. Hold on, let me finish. You don't have to die. As a matter of fact, God doesn't want you to die and He loves you so much that He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you believe in Jesus, according to this verse, you will be saved from the death penalty for sinning, which leads me to the next step. Step number two, believe in Jesus Christ. When a prison guard asked the apostles Paul and Silas what he must do to be saved, they replied in Acts chapter 16 verse 31 saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Believing in Jesus Christ means to believe He is who He said He is and everything that He accomplished for our salvation is true. One gospel truth regarding Jesus Christ includes the fact that He is the Son of God. John chapter 3 verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The Bible, in calling Jesus the Son of God, means that He is divine. He is called the Son of God because He shares the same nature with God the Father. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 confirms this. In talking about Jesus, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. However, Jesus took on a human body. Verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus became a man to show us what God is like. John chapter 14 verses 8 through 9 says, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Jesus also lived a sinless life. In speaking of Jesus, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 22 says, Who did no sin, neither was guile, in other words deceit, found in his mouth. This is crucial because when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior in faith, His sinlessness is exchanged for our sinfulness and we are seen as righteous before God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For He, God the Father, hath made Him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And Jesus not only died on the cross for our sins, He was buried and then rose again on the third day. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 through 4 says, For I declared unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead is crucial to the plan of salvation because that means He is a living Savior. The book of Hebrews calls Him our great high priest who ministers on our behalf to save us and reconcile us to God. There are several passages about this in the book of Hebrews. I'm not going to go through all of them because that would take too much time. But to give you an example, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 16 through 17 says, For verily He... Jesus took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him, which means it was necessary for him, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Therefore, Jesus' resurrection is just as important as Jesus' crucifixion for our salvation. Step number three, repent from your sins. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 tells us, Repent ye therefore and be converted, 
that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance basically means to turn from your life of sin to God. Jesus even preached repentance during his earthly ministry. Mark chapter 2 verse 17 says, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Notice how Jesus spoke of the necessity of repenting to prepare for the kingdom of heaven. The reason being is because turning from our sins helps us prepare for heaven. Because in heaven, there will be no sin. And when we repent from our sins, we need to make a full repentance, a full commitment and surrender to God. Because even if we cherish just one sin, Jesus' sacrifice won't cover it and we will be held accountable for it in the judgment. Step number four, confess your sins to God. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible promises that if we confess our sins to God, He will forgive us. And by the way, only God has the authority to forgive us for our sins. The Lord said in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 25, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. So when we confess our sins, we need to go straight to God. Psalm chapter 32 verse 5 is a good example of this. It says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Step number five, acknowledge Jesus as your Lord. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 11 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The word Lord means master, or someone who has authority over your life. So when you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord, you are accepting his authority. You are making a commitment to trust and obey him and to follow his example. This along with repenting from your sins and confessing them to God should be done in prayer. Are you convicted that you're a sinner in need of salvation? Do you feel like you're carrying a burden of guilt that you want to be released from? You can be forgiven and relieved of your guilt if you follow the five steps to salvation outlined in this video. As a matter of fact, if you feel God calling you right now to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please join me as I pray. Father, forgive me. Accept my confession that I'm a sinner worthy of death. I give my life to you. Thank you for Jesus' death and life to save me. Help me to do your will. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, congratulations. Your sins have been forgiven and you have been brought into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now I encourage you to study the Bible to learn more about Jesus and God's will for your life. I'll leave a link to some free online Bible study guides which will help you with that in the description box below this video. And find a good church to attend so you can get some support and encouragement from like-minded believers. I highly recommend the Seventh-day Adventist Church that's the church I go to, and you can probably find one in your area by Googling it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it and share it. Also, big thanks to everybody who helps support my channel by their prayers and donations through Patreon and PayPal. Your support helps keep this channel going. And check out some more of my videos by clicking on the screen. I have a lot of good Christian videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. God bless you.